How do you fancy to learn how to paint a butterfly in watercolour? Well, let me show you some little video clips from my main video on Patreon on how I painted the wing. Let's get started. So the first thing I like to do is kind of wet the paper first. And as you can see by adding this kind of opera rose, burnt sienna, yellow ochre mix on there, that kind of blends into the paper and gives me a nice kind of soft effect. I like to kind of blend the paint out as well because at least that way, as a watercolour, you can build up in layers as you go along. So once that's all blended out, then I'll start adding all the browns in there, like the ochre colours as well. Thinking about the layers that I need for the foundation stage, i.e. just a basic layer to begin with. So kind of planning the colours, I always like to plan the colours before I start. So it's quite wise to do that before you actually start on a painting because you're not having to think too much, you've still got to think obviously, but you're not having to think too much when you're actually doing the main colour mixing. So look at the photograph before you start have a really good look, kind of go into all the detail as well. With a lot of photographs, you can get it on a tablet, obviously, so therefore you can pinch into that detail and start looking at all the fine colours that you can see. If you do print the photograph off, however, obviously it's not quite as easy to do it that way. So working my double zero brush, I want to start picking out where some of the details are going to lie. So this will be the first layer of detail. And as per usual, I'd start light and then go dark and dark and dark, so darker all the time. You tend to find with butterfly wings as well is that they're quite complicated, there's a lot of detail in there. So I'm using a variety of techniques. So the technique at the moment I'm, going to, I'm using, as you can see, it's going to be like a scumbling technique. So that's just by using the side of the brush and just by touching the paper, just the edge, and not too much paint on the brush either. At least that way you can get kind of a little bit of texture from the paper um, as you apply the paint. We mentioned the paper as well. I tend to use a 140 not uh, cold pressed paper. I don't mean it's not cold pressed. I mean what it is, capitalized N-O-T, which means it's not hot pressed. In other words, it hasn't gone through any hot rollers. That way you get a nice kind of medium textured paper um, to kind of work on top of. You can just pick that out on the piece of test paper I've got there actually, uh, kind of working on that. Now remember this is just a cut down version from my main Patreon video where this video is all done in real time, so real time audio. So if you want to have a look at the entire five hour lesson, pop along to Patreon and I'll see you there. In that lovely colour. So bright, I love it. As of all watercolour though, you tend to find it will dry just a little bit lighter as well. Some people say 20, 30, 40%. It depends on the pigment that you put in your paint, to be honest with you. Or how much paint you or how much water you, you add to your paint. Imagine having a, a glass of orange squash juice, okay? and it's really concentrated squash before you add the water in. So the more water you add, the weaker the mix will be, and that will apply to the paint that you apply to the paper as well. So now I'm gonna go for the next layer, and this is gonna be a thicker, more creamier mix of, believe it or not, the same color I've already put on there. See, that's the beauty about watercolor as well, is that you can use the same color over and over again, um, even though, it's the same colour, you think, well, hang on, how's that going to make a difference? It will make a difference if you make the paint thicker. Even if you use the same consistency of paint, that area will gradually get darker and darker by putting layer upon layer, but only do this when the paper is nice and dry, okay? So when you go for the next layers and softening down the details like I'm doing there, then make sure you do this with um, on a dry paper in between all the layers of paint that you add on there. The thing with the other details as well, using the very tip of a brush, this is my double zero brush again, is that you've got to think about how much paint you're going to add to the brush. You don't want the brush too overloaded. So I tend to think about um, dabbing the brush tip on some kitchen roll first before I go to the paper. That then gives me that really fine tip 
on the brush. Now that's assuming, of course, that your brush is very detailed, that it's not worn away. You tend to find that this is a, the brush I use here is a synthetic one. And it's done by, um, it's made by Winsor Newton. It's a series 111 and it's a size double zero. But because it's synthetic, it does wear away quite quickly. So the tip does eventually kind of go quite round. But you can see the detail you can add by using this, uh, the very tip of this brush. The thing with um, butterfly veins as well is that there's so much detail in them, but they are kind of transparent as well, aren't they? So the colours I've been picking out for the main background colours, like the oranges and the reds, tend to be transparent colours, not semi-transparent, not opaque or anything like that. I wanted something that's going to be fairly transparent. One, I find transparent colours tend to be a little bit easier to pull off the paper. So if you make a bit of a mistake, you can take that paint off a little bit easier than before. can be quite tricky to actually use as well. Now one thing I tend to use a lot of is watercolour white. I know there's a lot of people that don't like using white, but that's my choice. I'm, you know, we're all different as artists. We all have our own unique ways of painting. So this is my way, this is the way I tend to work it, and I enjoy doing it this way around. Um, the beauty about watercolour white is that you can add those highlights in. And as you can see with the wings, these different sections within the wings of the butterfly, or this particular wing, should I say, I can really give that feeling of form and shape. So you can just see the top part of the wings there where I've added that white in. And the beauty about watercolour white, you can actually vary the consistency of it as well. Have a look on the market, have a look at the different manufacturers that you can find. And you find that there's some which are opaque, some are semi-opaque, some are semi-transparent. So have a look at which ones you prefer. I like the opaque versions because it really does cover. And it can in one fell swoop put a little bit of colour over the top. So there you go, that's how to paint a butterfly's wing in watercolour. Now if you fancy having a go at this and working on a complete video tutorial, I'll guide you through step by step, showing you a variety of techniques on how to do that. I'll also give you the outline drawing, the PDF guide and the photograph to work from as well. To find out more, just simply click on the links below. And remember to click on like, subscribe and share. And of course, you can always comment down below as well. Now, I prefer the double zero brush. But the question of the day is which size brush do you prefer? Let me know, put it in the comments below. And I'll talk to you all again very soon.